All right, sorry for the quick cut there. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but uh, we're in a new environment now, and uh, we're going to start off. Dave, you had a very good uh, topic to bring up. Yeah. Um, I guess my topic, so to say, is how does our interpretation or our feelings of having fun or fun change from when we are you know, younger to teen, late teens, and then into our 20s? We, mm-hmm. can't, we can't speak about anything past where we are now, but um, I guess just how does fun change to you and what does having fun mean from 8 to 18 to 28? Right, and I said when you brought this up, I thought it was a really good topic because since we've grown up together and have known each other for so long that this is we can see it in ourselves and we have shared experience from it, one of the things we kind of brought up is you know how exciting drinking was when you just started drinking whether it's high school or whatever and we thought it was the coolest thing ever it was so Still fun is, and right <laughs> but over time for me personally i had a lot of fun drinking when i was younger and it brought a lot of good memories and a lot of fun times with all my friends but over time i i haven't wanted to do it you know every weekend i've kind of gotten to this point where i only really want to drink if it's for an occasion, not necessarily has to be a big occasion, but I just don't like to do it, you know, two, three times a week, every single weekend. It gets kind of old for me. Not saying that's for everyone, but over time that has not, um, been my, it hasn't been as exciting and it's kind of had diminishing returns for me. And I think there's a lot of other experiences we've had that, you know, used to be really fun and now we don't look at it as being much fun. I I agree. I think, you know, Obviously, you know, we're having, we're throwing a couple back right now. And, yeah. you know, personally, I just like, in particular, when I'm like drinking a beer, for example, like I just love Miller Lite. I love the way Miller Lite tastes and stuff like that. But like going on what you kind of, what you said, you know, I think we have the tendency to kind of almost romanticize the past. Mm-hmm. And obviously like we made some great memories back in the day. Like we, we've done some really cool stuff, like made a ton of memories, like I said, but like we always have a tendency to kind of romanticize that. And I think that, you know, and it's not even just with that. I, I tend to do that with a lot of things in my life, you know, whether it's, you know, just any, any past memory, it always seems better at, you know, it, as it, maybe as it was, you know, and I think, I think that again, that's kind of human nature. Um, but I do think, you know, in terms of that type of stuff, we are getting to the point now where things change and our interests change and stuff like that. So we're not going to have those same memories, mm-hmm. you know, just gonna, they're not just going to happen again. You know, I feel like a lot of the memories that we've made kind of were like, you can't replicate them yeah. in a sense like that. And I almost kind of like that. I almost, it's almost like a lore. Like I respect that. Like there's just certain things that, you know, you just can't, and we've tried, like we, there's been times where we've had, we've tried to replicate these memories and, you know, I just think a lot has, has changed, you know, since then we've gotten older and I think our interests have changed a lot. Um, but I, I do think that we, when we look back, we think of like, Oh, remember this, remember that. Um, and yeah, it was fun. But I, I bet there's going to be a time where we look back on, like, a time like this, and we'd be like, man, that was the time. You yeah, know, like, right. that was the time. But right now, we're all just kind of like, man, like, this kind of sucks. Like, we're all kind of fighting our own battles right now. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, things change. Um, interests change. You know, we, we find different hobbies and stuff like that as we get older. Yeah, I think um, some other examples are, like, when we would play beer pong in oh, yeah. that was, basement that was it, you know, or someone's that was, garage. That was, right. Like, it would be fun to do that now, Mm -hmm. but we're not itching to do it like we were before. Mm -hmm. Or, like, when we used to have ping pong tournaments. Right. Oh, yeah. That would be fun to do now. Right. But that was like, oh, I can't. We were in that, like, phase where we were like, we need to do this every Mm -hmm. weekend. It would be the same now. It would be fun when we were in middle school or anything like that. Right. And it just wouldn't be the same. And it's weird how, I don't know if it's, it's probably a combination of the two. I don't know if you guys agree of maturing and having different interests, but I also think some things have sort of an expiration date where you kind of get into something and you do it all the time with your friends and then after a certain amount of time, it just doesn't, you know, hit the same. I don't know if you guys have any opinions on that. I don't know if it's a combination, it's more one or the other. Yeah, I would say, I would say like, I do 
really think that that take is very good as far as the expiration date because there is only so many times you can do something before it loses its novelty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and, totally. Uh, a way I think of it is people that love to vacation somewhere always say, I want to move here yes. until you're stuck Great there point. every day. Right. And then yeah. it loses its, yeah. its spark, yeah. its thunder. Because so you say, romanticize it, right? Yeah, yeah. And we are often, um, you know, told that the hindsight is twenty twenty and all that, but... We do tend to look back with rose tinted glasses, like mm-hmm. you say. Everything, um, everything we think about, we we can't really f- uh, remember as much um, emotions, so to say, is just the, in my opinion, just kind of like what happened. I don't know if I'm communicating it the right way, but mm-hmm. when we look back at things, we only remember oftentimes the good things. Yes. Um, oh, dude. That's not, to ima- that's not to say that there aren't bad experiences that we all remember. Yeah. Um, I just think we all do a good job of, as humans as really moving those good memories to the forefront of our brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I would say like fun to me, not to kind of digress, but also... Um, relate to the subject i believe it's a product of where you are in the moment um and it goes to show you or to to your point we loved playing beer pong when it was exciting and all we could do and before that it was ping pong because we couldn't drink you know (laughs) and then after that it turns into going to bars because we're legal and Mm -hmm. allowed so things just rapidly kind of not like rapidly, phase of life. Yeah, they phase. Yeah. And then at some point, you get to the point where it's like, I could do any of the four, um, but you know what? I'm not feeling it. And I think as we get older, we start to learn more about ourselves sure. and what we really want. We're not forcing ourselves to do things to oppress someone or uh, fit in, so to say. So we start to learn what we consider fun or I consider fun as an individual versus what everybody thinks is fun. Mm-hmm. And as you kind of lose a little bit of that self doubt and that gain a little bit of that confidence, you kind of filter out what you think people want to see you do versus what you actually want to sure. do. Sure, I think the big thing to take away from that is how much the activities that we're interested in have changed over time. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing to take away from that, maybe this is a little too deep, maybe this is kind of cringy, but it's the people and the relationship and doing those things that with people that you really love that that was the one constant with everything else changing. Yeah. And that's something important to remember that, you know, if you're, you know, planning a big weekend party event, something like that, that at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. It's the relationships and memories you create with the people you actually care about. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next thing kind of on the same topic. You know, I had the same exact feeling. It's kind of, you know how you said the next step was going to like out to bars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When I was in college and I was with my college friends, I got really sick of kind of doing the same thing mm-hmm. where I was, you know, going to the same bars, getting the same drinks, doing the same exact thing every single weekend. But I would want to go do it every single time because I was with my friends. Right. But kind of off of that, how do you, what do you guys feel on the, uh, the general, you know, way people live life from, I feel like this age on where it's like every weekend for a while you're going to bars. Like, what do you guys feel about that? I never, I never really understood the, that I, cause I'm like, I personally, I I don't really like the whole bar. Like I like a nice little calm, like bar, go have a couple drinks, play some pool, whatever. Like that's my type of bar. And I feel like a lot of people our age kind of agree with me. And yet they still kind of go along with the herd and they, they go out in nightclubs and, and really bars that are overly crowded yeah. and mobbed. And I never really understood why. And I, I, it's almost like I, I want to dig deep and pick these people's brains of like why yeah. they feel that way. And I just don't, I don't see that. I know I'm, I'm different than a lot of people in that aspect. Um, cause I, I really like I, I, to casually drink. Like I like to drink maybe on the golf course or, you mm-hmm. know, at a sporting event. Um, or like I said, over like a game of pool or something, a place where you can hear yourself and have conversations. Yeah. Um, I never really understood the evolution, like you said, of, of every weekend, you know, you got to go out, you have to do this. Cause like we're at the age now where like all of our friends are pretty much just doing that. You right. know, there's never a weekend really where like, let's have a ping pong tournament is a thought. 
we all know that if we were to do that, it would be a blast. Yeah. But, like, I never understood why we humans our age feel the need to kind of do that. I feel like it's because we know that's what the vast majority of people are doing. So that's kind of the way to socialize, to meet new people, you know, go out and, you know, see people that you're friendly with that you weren't expecting to see. And that's just kind of like the place to do it. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you that I wish there, it felt like there were other things to do to get the same product. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have any ideas of other things to do, if there is a way to do that. At this point, a lot of times I go out to the bar and I don't even right. drink and yeah. I just get like Diet Cokes and yeah. stuff because I don't feel like drinking. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Um, <clears throat> I think following the herd is the one, one kind of uh, thing I really agree with. But I think to take it to another level, it's people have such a fear of missing out and not being yeah. somewhere yeah. that when they hear other people were there, they hear that yeah. they should or could oh, yeah. be there. They want to go there. Mm -hmm. It's we don't. We, we almost fear so much of not being included because we spend our whole lives trying to be mm -hmm. um, that I think that's what draws a lot of that crowd out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm right there with you, Zach. Like it's to me, I prefer an intimate setting and that's not to sit here and say like, I'm a square and like, I'm not going to go out right. because yeah. I don't want yeah, exactly. to talk to anyone. It's like, right. I, I don't have problems conversing with people that I know or that I don't know or that I'm friendly with. It's just like, to me, nowadays, you go out, not to even bring out, it's a financial burden. To, yeah, that's you know what I mean? That's like, it really about. is. Yeah. Um, but that's neither here nor there. No, no. Um, it's here. Uh, yeah, it is. But it's also a hassle. There's way more liability involved. Oh, yeah. And oftentimes, it's uncomfortable. You've got to put your Friday best on. Sometimes I want to sit in, yeah, tux. I want to sit in my in my comfortable clothing or something that I don't like. I don't want to fucking wear right. a belt and, and, and drink not, a beer. Not to interrupt, but you you work so much. Like they they probably don't know. But you work. You're the hardest worker I know in this group. Like I, the last thing you might want to do is you know after you get a night off and you might have the next day off. The probably the last thing you want to do is go you know do that and. and Right. Because I think it's the only way it, to do it. Because if you were to, you know, I don't know if it was, if we were to have that ping pong tournament, mm -hmm. like we would invite our immediate friends. Right. And that would be very fun, but it wouldn't be socializing in a, a larger group. It's because right. like, that's like the bar on the weekend is where you have to go to be in that larger group. And kind of to your point too, more about the, the FOMO part of it. Mm hmm I think one thing that even emphasizes that even more is when you go to a bar and what you're doing is you're standing in your group of people, maybe talking to other people, drinking a beer, and then there will be some people in the group that are like, oh, like let's go to the next bar. And you're going to be doing the same exact yeah. thing with the same exact drink right. in the same exact setting in the next place. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, oh, I, I got to go to the, like this place to... Yeah. Maybe see what right. I'm missing out on over there, but right. it's just the same exact thing. And we'd be lying to ourselves if the root of this, or at least to me, and I see in a lot of guys like us, is women. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, it's always, and I think it goes the opposite way, too. I'm not trying to say, like, assume for the other gender or whatnot. It's just, like, people are fueled by the opposite, the opposite sex or whoever they're attracted to, to... Go out there and make an appearance, a good one, and mm -hmm. a good impression. Yeah, yeah. Something. And like that's ninety percent of why people go out, in my opinion, is to right. to mingle with the opposite gender. I just wish the bar wasn't the only. It's feel, it wasn't feel like the only way to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think progressively, not that we have any experience of the past, um, it has moved way more into that as a concentration. You don't hear about people like running into people at the roller skating rink or like. <laughs> the bowling alley, like shit like that just doesn't happen anymore and I get it. But I also think fun or having fun or saying you had fun is becoming uncool. In yeah. a way, you know what I mean? The second you say you had fun, people are like, what the fuck you mean? Were you like playing in a sandcastle? It's like, no, like I had a good time with the people that I enjoy being around. And back in the day, from what I've heard from experiences, you could do a lot more with a lot less and have a lot more fun. And I think that our lives have been so overcomplicated by everything else that we feel like the only way we can 
have fun is to be in an environment where we're surrounded with everybody else who's just as distracted as we are. And to be honest with you, I go out, half the people in the bar, probably if not more, are consumed on their phone or videotaping <laughs> or like yeah. checking, checking snap the weather, apps. Yeah. yeah, checking the weather. Yeah. Like, uh, you, calculator app. Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. calculator app. No, it's like for sure. It's it's sad to see and I'm not saying I'm not sitting here and preaching like I'm perfect, like I don't oh, do that. Me neither. Because like there are times where I'm like, fuck, like I don't feel like talking to anybody. I'm gonna see what the weather's like in Cupertino. But <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there, man. No, we've all I was, been I was there about twenty minutes ago. Right. We so I just think that to your point, Tim, like having fun shouldn't be uh confined to just like there should be other ways and i think as we get older we kind of in this phase are kind of just worried about still looking cool in my opinion there's Mm -hmm. a lot of people that still want to be like they want to be cool and they want to just go to bars because it's what to do Mm -hmm. but i wouldn't hate throwing some you know no absolutely in there dave and busters like there's no better things to do right no doubt i agree i just wish other people were of the same mindset and also acted on it. Yeah. So it was more of a larger social setting. There's there's so many other outlets. I and I, again, I, I don't want to sound like I know everything because I don't, and I'm I'm very unique I, in this aspect. I think I'm very unique in this aspect. You know, I, I, us, I should say, like we're just not the type that goes out every single day that we can. You know, I just think there's so many other ways. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's just so many other things to do. Like on a, on a Saturday night, everyone's like, oh, we gotta go to the bars, whatever. But, like, there's so many other things you can do on a Saturday night. You Meanwhile, know. it is Saturday night right now, and we're filming a podcast. Exactly. <laughs> and we're having, a fun, we're having a good time, you know. Right. And there's people who, if, know. if we know people, I'm not going to say any names, but who could be here right now, and they could be on Snap Maps. And they're like, oh, where is everyone? God, like, I wish I was here. I wish I was here. This isn't fun. Like, God, like, where are they? You know, and I just, I, I, I'm not that way because I'm having a good time, mm-hmm. you know. And I, I find peace and, and fun in something like this. And I'm not worried about what's going on in other places, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm so wrapped up with other things in my mind. I, all I try to find is fun for myself, and I don't worry about anything else. Yeah. And I, I wish people were the same way. I wish they worried more about what makes them happy instead of, you know, the potential of something else. Even though they could be here having a great time, and they might not even know it. They'd be having a better time here than they would be at a, at a bar or something, so, so to speak, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just think, I think you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, I think a lot of it's insecurities, to be completely honest, I think, so, yeah. and I don't want to sound like I'm insecure as hell. Oh, like we're too. all insecure. No, we're not gonna lie here. How many um, times I've gone like this to hide in my bedroom? Like, dude, shit, like, yeah, bro. And you know what I mean? No, I, I, we exactly. But I think some people, you know, are afraid that if they're not seen out one night, like where is so and so, then they're gonna be like, oh, that kid's lame. He didn't want to come out. You know, is that the reality? No. no, but that's just a thought that these people might have. And you know, I've had those thoughts in the past. I'm not gonna lie. It might not be about going out to a bar or something, but like. There's been so many situations where I've, I've been in my head about stuff like that. Because yeah. we're all human. We're all, you know, animals when it comes down to it. We're all mental beings. And we all think and we get in our own heads. And we, we create these stories. And especially me. I mean, I'm always creating these false, you know, narratives and storylines that, you know, are just false. But I think people get so wrapped up in, in stuff like that that they really get lost in what is true fun. You know, like mm-hmm. what makes you happy? Not like what right. makes you look the best. Right. I just keep going back to it. I wish there was a different social outlet like that. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Maybe mm-hmm. we're all just not looking hard enough. I, I don't know. I just Maybe. don't think we're there yet. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, unfortunately, too. like, the majority of the people mm-hmm. our age are just not attracted to anything other than socializing. And I'm willing to bet, or socializing in the way that we're talking about. And I'm willing to bet that there, are, like Zach said in the beginning, there's a lot more people that feel the exact same way we do. They just I don't agree. have the... They don't have the willpower to say no. Correct. Because yeah. half the time, people say yes to doing shit that they don't even want to do. Because yeah. you know how many times I've like said, oh yeah, I'll go out. It's right. like, I don't even fucking want to go out. Like 100%. you said, like, you, 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 you want to be with everyone. Right. You work, uh, like, you work all day so. and you like you stink you gotta get home shower put on even more yeah it's just fancy clothing like it's like even like i wear golf clothes to work then i gotta get in jeans and like a nicer shirt it's like fuck dude i want to put on sweatpants and turn on like literally something to just rot to before i fall asleep i don't want to go out and stand in a sardine can yeah i think that could be one of the reasons i started this particular podcast you guys might have seen it on my whiteboard up there was I think a hidden benefit of this 
is kind of to get this out there, preach that message, and hopefully, if this were to grow, attract, you know, like-minded people that think the same exact way. And because we're sitting here being like, yeah, I wish there was this thing, but, you know, there might be other people doing it, but they're not going to the arcade either because they don't think anyone else is of that mindset. Mm -hmm. You know what? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, why not? What are we doing to change this in a way too? Right. You know? Exactly. And I will say I, I did two things recently that were out of the ordinary for me. I loved it. I don't know what the second one is, but I'm pretty sure I know one. Yeah, I thought so it was sick. did a did a ha- <laughs> yeah go for it. Did a happy hour at a and it still involved drinking. Like funny enough, because like, we're of age, but it was a happy hour at a children's museum in the area. And yeah, but it's you, sick. Yeah, you got to, <laughs> you got to go to the museum of play that literally was one of the best places to go in my whole life when I was a kid growing up. It was just everything. There mm-hmm. was Toy Hall of Fame, arcade. A just grocery a grocery store. Yeah, a, a, a mock grocery store, just Sesame Street stuff. Just like a bunch of really cool interactive things and a huge space and a huge museum. And it was for adults. And that environment was definitely new for me. And it was great. And then on a, on a lighter note and something a little less alcohol-oriented, I went to... The previous week, just the Science Center, which is another museum, excuse me, on a Sunday afternoon. So not in like a prime doing thing hour, sure. but it was still a weekend plan that I did with my girlfriend that was out of the ordinary for somebody my age. I mean, there was either parents with kids or um, like employees. Like there was really nowhere in between. We saw maybe one other couple our age mm-hmm. and... It felt good to do something that made me, A, feel a little bit more fulfilled. I got to learn a little bit. <laughs> and, like, it was just fun. It was different. And it was refreshing. Yeah. It's almost like you're you're normalizing what some people think is, un, like, abnormal. In or, a sense. Yeah, uncool. Or, or, yeah, or uncool, whatever. Define that as, as you will. But, like, I'm saying, like, there's so many things that we don't even think about as, as you know, 23-year-old adults that we don't like something like that like we would never think of that but you probably had a blast you yeah. know and that's probably something that I, i'm i want to freaking do that after you tell me you come back and you tell me about that yeah. like that's something that i would be very interested in but people are so wrapped up in like what should a 23 year old be doing at this age at this time in their mm-hmm. life you know and we forget about the little joys that you know bring us so much joy i guess that you know we forget about on a day to day basis you know there's so many things that are out there that we're not, you know, really thinking about doing because we're so wrapped up about what we should be doing, which right. is, you know, going out, finding, finding your wife and as people yeah. say, and all this stuff. And I just, you know, drinking and getting drunk and like, I just don't think that that should be the norm. I think, I think you brought up a great point. It's, it's pretty much normalizing what we see as abnormal, mm-hmm. um, which isn't abnormal at all, but that's how it's almost viewed in a sense. Right. Um, cause you mentioned like there were, there weren't many kids your age there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's such a fun thing to do. Yeah. But no one would think of doing that. Right. And it's just like you you get to an age where you're more worried about, oh, I need to be finding a job and I need to oh, do yeah. this and X, Y, and Z. And you're, you're so locked into this like just gray mindset that you forget to think in color. And mm. um, I think uh, things like that just add a little bit of variety to your life. And that's not to say that you need to do that every week instead mm-hmm. of going to the bars. But I would be hard-pressed to find somebody that lives in an area that doesn't have a museum, a park, a bowling alley, uh, you name it. Something along the lines, those mm-hmm. lines. Because there is plenty to do. People just don't want to do the work to find it. Mm-hmm. We only know like restaurant, bar, or like... We know people who you just know will say no to that. Yes, and they, even though they, even though you know, if you tag them along and they come with you, they would have fun. You guys would have fun. There's no doubt. But they still would say no because a, they're worried that you know their image. Like, what if I get seen by someone yeah. like that? And then, well, first of all, they're there too. If they see you there, they're there too. Right. Second, second of all, that's a good point. Second of all, like that's not what you should be doing, and that's that's the ideology around a 23 year old is like, oh, mm-hmm. that you shouldn't be doing that, you know. But like. In reality, you can do whatever the hell you want to make you happy. Like who yeah. set who sets the boundary? These boundaries are set by these these illogical like mindsets by these people our age that 
set these 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 you know guidelines of what a twenty three year old should be doing at this mm-hmm. age at this time. Um, we're all like you said in the previous um, half of this podcast. You know, we're I forget the term you used, but we're all following the same supposed to follow the same timeline like our parents. Yeah. You know, you graduate high school, you you work your butt off. You know, you get a job, you you work to find a full time job once you graduate college, and then you work your tail off until the day you die. Like that, it shouldn't be that way. You know, you should find little, you'll spice up your life a little bit with little trips to the museum and happy hours. You know, yeah, things just, that make you happy that you wouldn't think of that maybe aren't thought of as a 23 year old. Yeah. Tim, how do you feel? No, I definitely agree. I also don't think people take enough time to self reflect and think about what would actually be fun or make them happy. Mm-hmm. And like the theme of this, they keep following the crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they don't take the time and effort to think oh going and doing that thing would be fun or i actually like this more Mm -hmm. and they don't even think they don't even like comprehend oh yeah going to the bar is going to be the most fun thing for me to do it's just like oh everyone else is doing that i'm gonna mindlessly go Mm -hmm. so i think that little amount of self-reflection can go a long way for a lot of people Mm -hmm. um but i also do think there's like you said before there's probably a lot more people that think the way we do. Yeah. But they're too, they're too almost, they're almost too stuck in their shell to do those things mm-hmm. because like you met, like you said, because they want to follow the herd or they did, they don't want to miss out, which we, we've all had FOMO before. Everyone's had FOMO, you know, but like mm-hmm. you don't want to miss out. You don't want to not be seen there. And because of that, they're so scared to go outside the lines and do certain things right. on certain nights. Um, you know, and I, I think that's, there's so many great things. I mean, that that's, there's so many great, and especially we're in Rochester. I mean, we have kickball leagues. You know, we have me and Dave played in a cornhole league. You know, last last winter. There's so many things. I mean, there there's that bring joy, and and I, I just think that people are missing out on little things like that. They they won't do them because they are worried that another commitment could come up, or not a commitment, but another yeah, no, thing I, yeah. that you know could lead to those events of the following the herd, and you don't want to be, you don't want to miss out, and so you're not going to go do this thing like kickball because you don't want to miss out on something else. You know, and I just think that. There's something there that, you know, shouldn't be the case. I don't think people should feel that way. I'm not judging anything. Um, but I just wish people could find joy um, in the little things, you know, in the little things that you wouldn't think of. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great way to end it unless you guys have anything no, else I think to that's say. Great. Mm-hmm. But I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming on. Nice. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Ducks. Had a great time. Ducks. Absolutely. Hit the like button. Comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Nice. Sick.